Hey guys, Phil here. Today I'm going to talk about line breeding and selection of performance traits in racing visions. Now line breeding is basically just a less intense variation of what people understand as inbreeding. So for example, if I was inbreeding, I would pair father, daughter, brother, sister, etc. Or if I'm line breeding, I would use a cousin or an aunt or a half sibling instead. We line breed in order to maintain genetic diversity and as many of the beneficial genes in a population as we're inbreeding it. It's not because inbreeding creates mutants. Both line and inbreeding will expose faulty genes in the population and that's just going to be uh, homozygous recessive individuals with the uh, deleterious recessive genes kind of popping their ugly heads up. But that's what selection is for. Um, if you're doing your job right, then line breeding can be a really effective tool. Now, here's my opinion. I don't think it matters either way. People get too caught up in the papers and forget that we actually have real-world standards that we can test by. If a pairing nicks and it produces results, that's more important than anything. And I'll give you two examples right now that are also both great examples of line and inbreeding. So, here we have Gazelle, the 12th place final winner at the 2022 Victoria Falls World Challenge Pigeon Race. It's owned by Vasquez Lofts. And as you can see here on the sire side, let me get my stylus. Here on the sire side, we've got Wolverine. Wolverine is a very important foundation bird uh, for Mike Gannis. And you can see him again right here. So that's both sides here and here are inbred on Wolverine. So here, Wolverine was bred to Abigail, who's off of Rocket and Mona Lisa. This is an outcross. This outcross produced, Mike has a very good one. She won at the South Africa Million Dollar Race. Then what they did is they took her and they bred her back to her dad. This is inbreeding. That produced Super 567. This is just a breeder bird but he is proven. He's produced multiple winners. Now, if we go down to the bottom here, <clears throat> so the top side is heavily inbred on Wolverine. If we go down to the bottom here, <clears throat> we can see Raven and African Rocket. These are also well-known birds. They're off of Young Kong. You see it double inbreeding on him on both sides. Both of these birds competed in one and they're both off of him. So then inbreeding them is gonna really, really concentrate those genetics, those winning genes off of Kong. So that produced this girl who's also a proven producer now because she produced the 12th place final winner, winner which is the second best American bird in the 2022 Victoria Falls race. So what they did here is they took an inbred line of Wolverine based off of winners and then breeding on the foundation and they crossed that with a similar but unrelated line where we're breeding onto this foundation bird but we're focusing on wins and then we're getting really amazing stock birds. These birds would probably not be the best racers, but they make amazing breeders. So we're basically getting inbred Wolverine and inbred Kong. And this nicks, and clearly this wins. Now, this is the one. Now, I'm not going to go through this because this is just horrible. It just gives me a headache looking at it. But this is uh, one of Mike Gannis's pedigrees. He's really uh, heavy on the ink. 
But as you can see here, we got Kong, Kong, and who are these two? African Rocket and Raven. So not only did they produce that uh, really, really good stock bird, they actually do produce really fine racing birds as well, which is really awesome. So this is an amazing line right here, the Kong line. And of course the Wolverine line is great. Um, here we have the overall winner of the final race of the Victoria Falls 2022. Uh, again, this is in German, so I'm not going to go all the way through it because I don't sprechen Sie Deutsch. But I will show you with this pedigree, essentially what he's done is created a subfamily by incorporating an outside foundation bird into his own lines. So here, so here we see Tom Van Gaver, or Gaver, sorry. Uh, he's crossing all his lines into this Whittacop Chippo. This is the, this Belgian bird, the uh, foundation bird that he's incorporating into his lines. As you can see, Van Gaver, he incorporates it, bam. Here he crosses it. Uh, this is from someone else, so it's kind of not his line, but then he pulls it in here. Uh, down here he does the same exact thing. Uh, this is just Finn. This is his own stuff. This is his own solid stuff. Klein Willy! Some Jan Poppins he incorporated here too, into his own blood again. Doubled up on his blood here. And then at the bottom we see with a cop chippo again. And this is an unrelated line. And then he brings it in to his own lines again. Van Gaver, Van Gaver, Van Gaver, Van Gaver. And you can see this is a, a form of line breeding as well. Sort of uh, in Gamecocks you would call this a grade, I guess. Almost like a back cross, not really. But where you're kind of using the foundation parent line and kind of just incorporating the genes of a foundation bird through his winning progeny. Um, so this is a lot tighter bread than say, like I would consider the gazelle bird we just looked at. I would consider that an outcross more than anything. This is also an inbred bird. I like to see inbred birds that can win over outcrosses because to me that's just more valuable because you have to go back and stabilize those outcrosses. That's the issue. Okay, so on the selection. <clears throat> uh, no matter what you do, you're going to have to be making proper selections. Uh, you could do the best pairings in the world, but if you're not selecting properly, you can still end up with duds. So... I've got an example here. Uh, this is just a random race I pulled off of Wind Companion. This is the Peach Classic uh, final. You can see we had 448 birds entered, 300 clocked, and whatever birds were entered into activation or whatever is irrelevant. All we really care about in this data set that we're collecting is this. We only care about the birds that finish the final race. So as I'll show you here, it's not only the genotype, but the phenotype being expressed of the bird that's important, and that can be affected by a number of things. Also, there's just so many variables. Like, for instance, you really have to be specific. Um, if you're breeding, you want to have all your birds in the same race because the competition is a factor. The weather is a factor. The person flying the birds is a factor. Um, you know, bad tosses are a factor. Um, sometimes, if you've played sports, you know, sometimes you play better than you've ever played for just one day. You know, just all the stars align. And sometimes you have those days where you just wish you weren't alive. It's the same thing for pigeons. They have their good days and their bad days. But if we look here, you can see just in, in here, the first four on this drop, they all got in at the same exact time damn near. So all these birds are of equal caliber to me. And if you look at the next one, 14 seconds, oh, actually he's in the same drop too. I don't know what that is. Um, but you can see 
after that, five minutes later. <clears throat> five minutes later, that could have been caused by anything. They could have gotten scrambled up. They could have gotten jostled. They could have gotten swooped on. They could have had a, an obstacle. Who knows, you know? Um, but here we got one, two, three, four, five. Five all in the same drop. All the same caliber. Seven, three, one, two, three more. One, two, three, four more. All these birds are really, really, really high caliber birds that could have won on any other day. Um, I think once we start getting past, probably these birds all could have been champs. Once we start getting past 10 minutes, then I think it starts to be a little bit more genetic influence. But even still, these birds here, you can see, we, we'll go all the way down to number 46. And that's when we start getting past 30 minutes. I think anything within there, and this is just personal, you know, some people have more rigorous standards, but breeding the best of the best doesn't always produce the best. Like that's why there's registers of merit and stuff like that, because a lot of times it's not the best birds that produce the best offspring. Uh, sometimes that is the case, you know, but just at least in my experience, you know, um, especially for genetic improvement overall, it's better to have uh, more numbers of higher caliber birds, even though they're not all, you know, the top 1% or whatever. As long as they're in the top 10, 15%, some people say 20, um, I would probably caution against going that wide, but, you know, I think 10, 15% is fine. Uh, those should all be able to produce really high quality birds and having a hundred birds to test from versus 10 is going to make a big difference for you. So here we have a bell graph. This is just kind of like a statistics thing. Uh, they use it in quantitative genetics. Um, that's just tracking traits and breeding that can be measured more or less so what we're seeing here is a distribution of a quantitative trait like racing performance uh, that's what we're going to be working with today so this is just generic uh, it'll kind of skew one way or the other depending on the population's fitness um, and these tails here can get kind of long um, that's just again, you know, just depends on the population uh, Breeding isn't like super exact Unless you know, you have the genome sequenced and all that but uh, Most of us don't have that so um, What we're looking at here is that race that I just had pulled up. This is the peach final and our best bird speed is 1,200, I'm just rounding, it's 1,263.473, but we're not going to get into that. So it's 1,263 yards per minute. Yards per minute is probably the best parameter to gauge performance by in this regard. Okay, so if we add 1,263 and 433 and we divide it by 2, then we come out with the mean or the average, which comes out to 8. 48 and that's going to be the number actually right there so 848 at the center 433 at the back 1200 at the front we can pretty much knock all those out they're all not suitable for what we're selecting for okay these guys too. So this inner part is 68.2%, just this alone. Don't worry about these numbers. Once we get rid of that, then we start getting into here, where this is, like I said, about 15, 16, 17%, give or take. All right. These are the birds that we're gonna wanna select for. Since I'm assuming that you are not Jeff Bezos, you're probably not going to be able to afford these board, boards, 
these boards here you're probably not going to be able to afford but uh, the boards in this area should be more than affordable especially if you catch them after a few months on auction you know the prices go down pretty dramatically but um, yeah every generation you're gonna have to make selections based off of just hard data like this uh, you can't leave it to things like oh this bird feels great in the hand you know like that's that doesn't really tell you anything you can't measure performance by uh, counting wing feathers or you know whatever else it may be you just you got to put them in the races so yeah that's all i got for you today i uh, hope that clears some things up if you guys have any questions go ahead and uh whack them down in the comments and uh until next time later